everybody. <clears throat> What's happening? Chris H here again. Still in uh, McLeod Ganj, India, northern India. Um, I've heard some people pronounce it as Ganje. It sounds kind of strange, but I don't know. I don't really know what the correct pronunciation is of it. It's a part of Dharamsala in um, northern India, like I said. I've been here about uh, three weeks or so teaching English as a volunteer at this um, charity organization for Tibetan refugees because there's a lot of um, Tibetans that came here uh, to this town after the Dalai Lama decided to set up his uh, residence here. So um, there's a lot of Tibetan refugees here and uh, that's the sort of the target of the school where I work. So this whole time, the last three weeks, I've just been here in this town going to school, coming back, walking around, eating. Not really going anywhere. <clears throat> Yesterday there was a little uh, excursion, as they call it, um, set up by the school where I work for um, all the teachers that work there. Uh, I mean, there's not that many teachers, only three or four. And uh, so we all took this little trip outside of McLeod Ganj, outside of Dharamsala, into the you know, main area of India, the, the lowlands, more like lower land area. And uh, it was a kind of a long day. It's about a 12 hour total trip and um, a lot of driving on very chaotic roads. Yes! All right. Hi. Out of the traffic. Bye-bye, Chandra, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Chandra. Oh, more traffic. <laughs> got to see a lot of things that um, I have not seen in a long time. I mean, I was in India, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago or something, no, 15 years ago, never mind. And um, <clears throat> the trip I went on yesterday sort of reminded me more of that. A lot of uh, narrow streets with a lot of uh, tons of people and um, crazy traffic, animals on the streets and just this vast uh, place, space. I mean, India is such a vast country, you know, it's like... Uh, it's like the US or China or something. <clears throat> it's a very big place. Um, one thing I did realize uh, from being on this trip is that this this area, McLeod Conj, it's like a little, um, it's like almost like a little haven in the middle of India because it's very high up and the weather uh, seems different. It's like misty and cool here and down there uh, in the plains, if you want to call it that, it's like hotter, sunnier, dustier, you know, um, so. Give a con contrast. Also here it's very uh, simple, the place. It seems like quieter and smaller than a lot of other places. Um, I was just filming this video and I saw this monkey like appear about five feet below me. Let me see if I can capture him. Where are you going? Where's he going? Okay, so the monkey ran off, thank God. He was a peaceful monkey. Didn't want um, to interact with human beings, which is a good thing. Anyway, let's go on to the video. Why not, since um, I have nothing more to say, or can think of nothing more to say. So, uh, check you later. I mean, I'll check you in this video you're about to see, and then after that I will check you later. Hey, what's up? I'm, um, I'm in India, Team Macho. Beer, it's a place called Beer, where they have uh, a lot of um, paragliding people coming and going, as you can see in the background. It's pretty cool. Very busy with paragliding. And I think you may have seen the journey that we took to get here, which is pretty um, pretty challenging driving. Good job, Mr. Boom, the driver of the Jeep. Uh, so that's it. And there's some more Tibetan people here. I don't know if they want to say hi. Let's see. I keep it rolling. So this is uh, Tenzin Yangdong, who is the head of the English department at just Tenzin. Sorry, just Tenzin. So, uh, it's a really nice place. Thanks for taking us here, Tenzin. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you want to say anything about it? Or? Um, well, this is the uh, world famous paragliding site. Uh -huh. And uh, it's called Beer Landing Site. Okay. And 
and uh, there are tournaments happening here. Right now, it's the right season for the paragliding. Okay. Yeah. Many people come here. Yeah, I can see there's a lot of them. My, yeah. So many. <laughs> so they are all Pretty preparing good. for that. Okay. Thanks. Peace. Okay. Peace. This is the second highest. Sorry? Second highest place. This was second highest place for paragliding. Oh, over there. Yes. They okay, up there. Anybody? Hi, Chris. Hi. How are you? Good. Thank you. How are you? Where are you? How are you, Tenzin? Yes. Where are you right now? Here. Here. Here, India. It's a Which Tibetan, place? It's a Tibetan community where they also have this hang gliding site, or paragliding site for tourists. Oh, okay. And, oh, look at this. And so, he is not Tenzin going Gento. for a paragliding, Saja. I'm too scared to go paragliding, <laughs> as, is she, as is everyone in our party. We're all too scared. If you had so only scared. once in mind to do, <laughs> you have to be scared, ma'am, you're doing adventure. Don't feel scared, so what's the meaning of adventure? <laughs> Share it out with yeah, me. I'm feel scared. Thank you. We are basically locals here. We have courage to do that. We have a stomach. No way. How much does it cost for that? It's 3,000 per person. Huh? 3,000 per pack. 3,000 per person. Okay. How was your weekend? How was my weekend? Uh, it's good today. It's my first, the first day of my weekend. I had to wake up very early to come on this trip, but I'm happy I did because it's. Uh, I've seen a lot of things in uh, this part of India that I haven't seen before. Uh, because so far I was just in the town of uh, uh, Maglod Ganj the whole time. I haven't left it. This is my first day outside of Maglod, so it's kind of fun to see the world outside. Okay. And now we're seeing all these uh, people get ready for paragliding. They're kind of like warming up and testing the parachute. Oh, it's okay. kind of interesting, and the paragliding... Weird. We will try it next round? Maybe next time. Okay. Next life, maybe next life. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Hey, what's up? The paragliding stop has uh, is done. Now we're, I was told to make a video here because it's one of the nicest, biggest restaurants in the Tibetan settlement of beer. And it is a nice courtyard here. There's a man cutting the grass right here behind me. There he goes. Very nice lawn here. And we're gonna have lunch at this cafe back here. Trad traditional Tibetan food? Sort of. Sort of, okay. We've got some uh, momo, chicken momo. What is that? Yeah. This is uh, potato fried. Pota potato. Uh, sorted uh, potatoes. Okay. In uh, in actually, the name given to this dish is alu sisi. Alu sisi, okay. And then this is also something uh, like Chinese cabbage. Yeah. Chinese cabbage, yeah, I recognize that. Okay. Uh, sort of a side dish. Side dish. Now here we have some mutton, right? Some yeah, mutton. mutton. It's the main course. It's the main course. Yes. Cool. Everything here is sort of an Asian food. Asian what? Not Asian food. Asian food, not specifically Tibetan. Yeah. Okay, it's just a fusion, like an Asian fusion. Yeah, because it has not much of a spiciness. Oh yeah. Uh, the heat that we are talking Yeah, about. okay. It's tasty. Yeah. Good for health. Okay. You can enjoy as many plates you can. Okay, that sounds good. I'm pretty hungry. Right. Hello again. We're now at a monastery called Sherab Ling. And it's a massive, enormous space and it's very quiet in here. So just a quick quick tour of that. It looks pretty amazing in here. It's a gigantic covered space covered by this roof up here. And I guess that's the main monastery building there, which I will be 
going into shortly. So we're in this um, place of many stupas now. Many, many, many stupas. Stupas are uh, like um, Buddhist um, holy relics tower things. Sometimes there's relics in the base and um, they're just sort of monuments about Buddhism. Um, so it's sort of a holy place here, I guess, I was told. And uh, it's very quiet and there's many, many stupas. and. Um, that's the, that's the main idea here. Seven stupas, which holds these eight stupas, uh -huh. and each eight portions have the teacher's remains, like Lord mm -hmm, Buddha's mm -hmm, remains, mm -hmm. which were further divided. Mm -hmm. So one stupa holds like the burned bones from its crema cremation. You mean like the original stupas, right? Yeah. Okay, not these stupas here so right now. This, these this is like a the, symbol of that. Yes. Yeah, I got it. So then on some one stupa ha holds the unburned bones. Okay. One holds the charcoal for used in the funeral pier. Okay. Then there is like uh, one stupa which holds the Buddha's canine teeth. The what? I, it says here, Buddha's canine teeth. Canine teeth. Yeah. Okay. And then there is a stupa which holds uh, some hair, mm -hmm. nails of Buddha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all uh, of it, like we are commemorating his mm -hmm. wisdom, his enlightenment and everything. Mm -hmm. Thanks for reading the sign so I don't have to. <laughs> sure. So what Tibetans do is like, you know, mm -hmm. they take a whole one round mm -hmm. of this place. Okay. A to whole commemorate round. Buddha. I see. And his deeds, good deeds. Sure. Thanks. And in return we get the blessings. I see. Okay. Is this like a sweet thing? Oh, yeah. no. Not sweet at all. Okay, thank you. You want me to do it? Must be a So, uh, Yang Dong, you want to join my YouTube channel? Uh, what would I get? Maybe I can buy you a cheesecake if you su subscribe. Is that okay? Yeah, okay? yeah maybe. Yes. Yeah, I already got a subscriber. How about you? Can I buy you um, a coffee or something? If you yes, coffee. Like expensive You'll be my subscriber? Yes. Great. And you? You want to subscribe to the YouTube channel? Pizza. Pizza? Oh, pizza. Uh, yes, pizza. All right, you got it. You got it. And yes. Romo, what about you? What do you want to subscribe uh, to my channel? Same as coffee. Coffee? Same okay. Food. Coffee, yeah. coffee, cheesecake, coffee pizza. Lorry. All right. Yeah. Some yes. four new subscribers. Yeah. Woo. Don't forget to <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe.